Golan 2018.2 contains a host of updates and improvements. Go module support is now built in. There are new quick fixes and intention, more post fix completion options. The debugger and tools have been updated, and there's better VCS support. The IntelliJ platform has been updated to version 2018.2 as well. Let's start with the Go module support. Now, when you create a new project, you'll also see a new type of project called Go module or Vigo. You can define the project to be either inside or outside of the Go path, and the SDK to be either Go 11 or newer, or 1.10 using a custom Vigo location. After you choose these settings, you'll be able to create the project as usual. Now you'll also see that there is a new file present in a project called go.mod, and it's already populated with the name of the module that you created. If you want to synchronize third party packages into your application, then you can use the sync packages quick fix option on the missing ones, and it will invoke the necessary Go commands in order to download and populate the libraries as well as do the necessary entries in the Go mod file. At the end of the operation, you'll see everything that happened with the operation itself, and then you'll be able to navigate to your code as before. The move refactoring has also been updated. You can now specify whether a type or an identifier will be moved across packages and you can create a directory, a file name, a package or use existing ones. You can also view the conflicts that may arise from the move operation and be able to choose whether you want to move related identifiers or types or if you want to export them after the move or not. You can preview what's going to happen with the move refactoring by using the preview option and this will allow you to see where the identifiers are currently used or defined in order to understand what's going to happen with the source code after the change. Once you're happy, you can use the do refactor button and everything will be updated as expected, including the import statements and references. However, if you are unhappy or change your mind, you can also use the undo operation to undo the move. New quick fixes and intention in Golan 2018.2 allow you to quickly convert between convertible types according to the Go specification, such as a, a string to a slice of bytes or vice versa. The tooltip information displayed whenever a type does not implement an interface has now been improved so that it displays more information and help identify the problem. And the new quick fix called implement missing methods allows you to quickly fix this problem. If you want to use the .import alias on a package, you can invoke the intention on the package name and do so, or if you want to remove the .import, you can invoke the similar action. Invoking the implement methods action now allows you to also create a new type so that you can create a type during the selection of the interface that you want to implement. And finally, if your function or method calls return values, you can use the introduce local variable in order to assign those values to local variables. There are two new postfix completion options in 2018.2. First one allows you to quickly sort the slice of integers, strings, or custom slice using the built-in sort function. You can invoke the dot sort option on the slice name and it will use the appropriate function from the sort package. Or if it's a custom type, it will use the sort.slice method. You can now use the .rr postfix completion option, which combines the previous rre and rrv options into a single one, and allows you to invoke this both on function calls as well as identifiers and handle errors in your code. One of the debugger improvements in this version is that you can now use non-suspending breakpoints. This, combined with the ability to either log a message when a breakpoint is reached, print a stack trace, or even evaluate and log an expression, means that you can now have some powerful debugging features available to you. In the following example, you'll see that the application execution is not interrupted while printing on the console that the breakpoint has been reached, as well as the value of the expression that we wanted to evaluate. A new mechanism to display the contents of slices, maps, and arrays is present. This will use lazy loading to quickly load in memory a few items, and then you can load as many as you need. Also. The presentation for these types has been improved so that you can better understand the values and the keys that are being displayed for you. The tools update in this version include a change to the File Watcher plugin. You'll be able to configure a watcher as you used to do before, but now you'll also have a new option called Level to define it either on a project level or on a global level. 
This means that you can now share the watcher across all of your projects, and you can still enable or disable it per specific project. Finally, let's talk about the VCS improvements in this release. You can now open as many log tabs as you need, and they will be able to operate independently straight in the version control panel. If you use git and you want to delete a tag, you can now do so straight from the context menu, or you can choose to restore the tag again. To preview the changes made in a certain commit, you can now use the preview diff option in order to display a panel with the file changes that you need. You can also select multiple commits and have the version differences displayed for all of them at once. You can now use the browse repository at revision in order to display the contents of the repository at a certain point in time using the use syntax analysis as well. And if you are using the commit and push dialog from the editor, you can now skip the push dialog or only show it for protected branches. Finally, if you are using GitHub from the editor and you have multiple GitHub accounts, you can now configure all of them in a single place and then choose which one to be active per project. You can use either the usual login with username and password or the enter token mechanism, and it will work for either cases. And setting the default is as simple as clicking a button. Thank you for watching, and let us know your feedback and suggestions in the comments section below.